So uh, instead of telling you, I'm a academic researcher. So I'm in the knowledge development business, uh, where we have some sense of uh, we have a sense of discovery that what drives what we do. And if we discover ideas that uh, other people don't know about, we call that research. If we discover ideas that other people know about already, we call that learning. <laughs> and um, sometimes when we are describing things that you may not be aware of in terms of things that you do know, we call that teaching. Now, um, in the world of research, what's really valued are, are new ideas. The, um, the only thing is that um, they're important. How do you come up with them? And one of the easy ways to come up with new ideas is just to see things differently than other researchers. Uh, and what's the easiest way to see things differently? Um, well, if you come from a different cultural background, than other scientists. You can't help but look at things differently. So, so I'm really in the business of, of enhancing the quality of scientific research and doing that by addressing issues of, of minority underrepresentation you know, in the sciences. So I'll tell you up front, um, create more black scientists. I'm here to tell you it's easy. If one, you do science, you talk to black people, <laughs> okay. And you like building research communities of excellence. Okay. So, how I get into this? Um, I'm a mathematician, so um, oh, I'm down there. So I was able to join this group and get involved in the world of mathematics. Okay, my career path. So I was uh, born in Jefferson City, Missouri, because my parents met at Lincoln University there. And then I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and attended University City High School. Then I was an undergraduate at Princeton University. And I majored in mathematics. And after I got my math degree here, I then went to get my PhD at Stanford University. Then I spent 20 years working at Bell Laboratories to finally come back here, Princeton, as a professor. So as you can tell, that um, Bell Labs uh, played a major role in shaping, well, certainly shaping my professional career. But it also, everything I learned about outreach and developing minorities in science uh, came from uh, my time at Bell Labs. Uh, and it started by meeting this, uh, this gentleman. Uh, James West, who at the time was the most senior black researcher at Bell Laboratories. And later, um, I found that he helped create the, um, a lot of the Bell Labs fellowship programs that were developed back then for minority outreach. You know, we're talking about the 19, 1970s. Oh, and by the way, he was the, uh, it was and still is actually, the inventor of the modern day microphone. Okay. So he's in the Inventors Hall of Fame based on his research. 90% uh, of all the microphones, maybe even this one, um, are based on patents from his, his research. Now, as a professor, um, you may see me every now and then talking, giving talks about this history. And um, when we're talking about notions of revive, I also like to talk about the concept of, the, of a renaissance. Because um, you might have heard something called the Harlem Renaissance, and that was an activity among a lot of black artists and writers. 
of, well, for black scientists, the last three decades of the 20th century, uh, that was our renaissance uh, because I met uh, a critical mass of researchers, uh, Bell Labs, and what I learned was how to excel in your research and leverage that to help the next generation. So the people on top were some of the folks I had met when I was working at Bell Labs. A lot of the people on the bottom, they were like me. We had gotten Bell Labs fellowships that paid our way to get uh, our PhDs in technical fields. And the output here could be things from uh, being the dean of engineering at um, Cornell University, uh, winning the apprentice, or um, being the first African-American woman to um, be a tenured professor at Caltech, or starting a company on um, you know, uh, silicon graphic workstations that were used to create special effects for movies like Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park, <laughs> or to be a professor of physics and mathematics at uh, Duke University. Now, uh, give you a sense of, of how you do this. I'll just talk about some of my own personal research, kind of give you the, the map of that. And if you're into, well, I don't know if you're into the leasing of shared resources, but that's what queuing theory is all about. And this is a special model I developed from that that's inspired by modeling telephone call centers. And we just do a little mathematical analysis here. Um, come up with quantities people like called dynamical systems and what's nice about them. These are things that are easy to code up and use them to compute things. And use this as a basis to make some optimal decisions. Um, now over here we just get a little more technical. But um, a lot of this work is actually motivated to help address issues in um, healthcare operations. And here's some work I plan to do in the future. You know, look at issues of risk, because this is when you bring in randomness and probability into what's going on. Now, the research area in green. That was the basis for the PhD of my first student, uh, Robert. And then the area in red, that was the basis for the PhD of, of Jamal. Both of them got their PhDs in operations research and financial engineering right here at Princeton University. Um, blue area, that was the um, basis for the PhD of uh, Jerome who uh, I was his thesis advisor, but he got his PhD at Binghamton University. So, uh, so what I'm saying is that, um, you know, working with the next generation, supporting them, this can organically grow out of your own research. Now, another thing that Bell Labs inspired me to do was I met so many black chemist, and I found they had an organization called Nobache, which is the National Organization for Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers. And I met an, a group of black physicists, and they had a group, uh, um, an SBP, National Society of Black Physicists. But I'm a mathematician, so I was wondering, what are we doing? And so that inspired me to create an organization called CARMS. And CARM stands for Conference for African American Researchers in the Mathematical Sciences. So we've been holding annual conferences like this for 20 years. Everybody you see here is either, either they're researchers, you know, they're professors at universities, or they're grad students working on PhDs. And over 20 years, about 100 student presenters we've had have gone on to get PhDs in the Mathematical Sciences. And about 35 of the research speaker, speakers, if they didn't have tenure already, they went on to get tenure later on. 
Okay, but that's good for um, uh, you know the country at large. But I think a previous talk talked about the the uh, importance of investing locally. So um, what I've been doing on my own campus? Well, helped start a group called the Wesley L. Harris Scientific Society. And uh, that's Wesley Harris right there. I named it after him because he is the first African American to get a PhD in engineering at Princeton University. He got this in 1968. And also, this is Professor Rodney Priestley. You know, so there aren't too many of us uh, black engineering professors at Princeton, so I figured I should give him a shout out. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, also another reason I need to because he's the one that uh, kind of got me involved in this TED talk in the first place. So, but everyone else here is a, gra a graduate student. Um, well, at the time, it was 2009. They've all gone on, gotten their you know PhDs. There he is. Uh, what's the mission of the group? Well, we take uh, students like this, and we turn them into students like this. Okay, so everybody here has a PhD from Princeton University. So let me end quickly. Um, in uh, 2014, these people also got their PhDs. You might remember a student, Jamal. You remember Rodney standing over there. Uh, but uh, we bring this all full circle where James West now has the opportunity to have an honorary degree from Princeton University, welcoming, uh, uh, you know, sort of thanking him for all the work, acknowledging that he's done in the past. So let me stand here, and Renee is kindly and politely telling me my time's up. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your time. And all I would say is think plural. <laughs>